Have you ever felt your ex pull away and you're just not sure why? Maybe there's a part of you that's afraid that maybe you did something wrong. Maybe you said something wrong. Maybe you somehow went a little bit too far with that last joke that you told. Or maybe you weren't responsive enough. Maybe when they expressed something to you, you didn't express enough compassion or empathy or something like that. It's a very common concern that a lot of people have, especially when their ex pulls away. But there's also a huge mistake that a lot of people make that causes them to make a bad situation worse. We're going to be covering that in this video and of course we're also going to be covering what you can do to benefit yourself in this situation and how you might want to consider responding instead. So please stay tuned through to the end. Hey there, it's Clay with ModernLove.Life. Now, if your ex is pulling away, you might think that it's because of something that you did and it might cause you to panic and compensate or overcompensate in some way. Perhaps apologizing even though you may not know what you're apologizing for. Perhaps you're walking on eggshells. Perhaps you're um, you know, saying that you're sorry for some very small little thing that, I mean, you know, you're racking your brain. You can't figure out what you could have done wrong and all you can find is this small little like crumb of like, oh, you know, maybe I <laughs> forgot to brush my teeth before we met up or something and you were so repulsed by my breath that you now refuse to talk to me or something like that. This is a very common experience that a lot of people have. Um, it's, it's when their ex pulls away, they will then start to jump to the conclusion that they must have done something wrong, um, and then they start ruminating over what they may have done wrong. And then they start this, this cycle, this vicious cycle that we're going to go over in just a moment here. But if you do like these videos that I do, please help a guy out with his YouTube channel by hitting that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel. And of course, please make sure you hit that notification bell while you are subscribing as well too. Okay, so here's the vicious cycle. Um, as they start to pull away, there's a certain sort of gap in understanding that forms between their actions and our understanding of their actions. So they start to pull away. We don't know why they're pulling away. That's the gap right there. Why are they pulling away? I don't know. And so we start asking ourselves, why are they pulling away? Why did they pull away? Did I, did I say something wrong? Did I do something wrong? And of course, when you start to ask yourself these questions, your mind is going to come up with answers to these questions. It's going to come up with uh, possible scenarios, possible things that you could have done wrong, possible ways that you could have offended them, possible you know, things that, 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 that could have uh, annoyed them in some way and caused them to pull away, right? And what happens in this situation is we're keeping all of this to ourselves. We're overthinking it and we're using that to fill in the gap, fill in that gap in understanding. Many times with our own fears, our own insecurities, and our own limiting beliefs. This is, you know, if you've been following me for a while, this is what we would call the BS machine because your mind is a BS machine that will constantly come up with uh, negative things to reinforce the, 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 the outcomes that you're seeing, the, that you're observing. It'll tell you that, of course, you know, they're pulling away because I'm unworthy of love or because men are all the same or because women are all the same or because love is impossible or because, uh, you know, whatever, right? What we want to do is actually avoid this whole trap entirely because what's happening when we're filling in the gap is we're just really taking a guess. We're guessing at why they are not responding to us. We're guessing at why they're pulling away. And you know, as with any guess, we could be right. Maybe there's a possibility that maybe we did something over the top that drove them away or something like that. But there's also a possibility that we could be totally incorrect on all of this and that maybe they're um, uh, pulling away for other reasons. Or maybe we think that we said something over the top, but really we you know, triggered something that, that offended them in some other way. This could be very common as well too. So what we want to do is not keep this to ourselves and ruminate over it, not post about it on you know, social media, not do anything like that but or talk about it with friends and all that sort of stuff but what we want to do is we want to say okay 
I don't know why you're pulling away. I don't know what this is about. And rather than keep that to ourselves, we want to actually engage them in the process of working things out with us. So what we want to do is we want to say, hey, I've noticed that you're pulling away or I've noticed that you've been res less responsive or whatever you're, you're, you're observing. Um, I don't want you to feel, you know, whatever, uncomfortable to talk to me or feel like you, you know, need space or whatever. If there's something that I'm doing that's causing you to feel that way, please let me know. And now they have the opportunity to come forward and to let you know what's, uh, what's, what's really the matter with them. It might be something that you did. It might be something that you said. It might be some, you know, way that you overlooked them or, or weren't considerate or something like that. But it could also be things that are totally um, outside of, of, of your control, of your influence. So what we're doing here is we're actually recruiting them into the conversation with us to fill in that gap for us and to give us clarity on what the actual issue is. And you know, as we mentioned before, it could be many things that might not involve you at all. It could be that they had a busy week. It could be that they had a stressful week. It could be that they just had a fight with their, uh, you know, family or something like that, and they're feeling weird. It could be that they've been sick. It could be that they forgot their phone at home. There could be endless explanations for how this is happening. But on a deeper level, what's really going on here is we're doing two important things here. Number one, we're starting to build what we would call a same team dynamic. Now, being on the same team is an incredibly important thing when it comes to getting back together with your ex or making any relationship work. Obviously, um, you know, if you're going to have a great, amazing relationship with someone, you'd want that person to be on the same team as you. But there's no shortage of reasons why people might not see each other as being on the same team these days. You know, of course, there's men versus women. There's, you know, anxious attachment style versus avoidant attachment style. There's, um, you know, uh, oh, we're broken up. We're exes. Therefore, we're supposed to hate one another because, you know, whatever. That's what people do on TV and movies or something like that. There's, there's all sorts of reasons why people might see each other as being on opposite teams. What we want to do is we want to start to break that dynamic and start to build a more positive one where the two people, where you and your partner, can actually be on the same team because that, of course, is a great relationship habit. Uh, the second thing that we're doing through this is we're actually starting to, pr uh, uh, we're actually starting to practice good, solid communication with one another. Now, it should come as no surprise that good communication is an important quality in a strong relationship. And one good way that we can start to communicate with one another is to, you know, actually check in with one another and to allow our partner to help us fill in the gaps that we're experiencing in, um, in our sort of experience of them and how their behaviors are showing up in the dynamic. And so when we do this, we're able to focus on these two important elements in the process. Uh, if you do want to learn more about all of this, please feel free to check out our course called Relationship Repair over at modernlove.life slash RR for Relationship Repair. There's also a link for it down below in the description box of this video. But with that being said, you made it to the end of the video. Thank you so much. Give yourselves a thumbs up for making it all the way to the end of the video and drop me a comment down below letting me know that, hey, you did make it to the end of the video. With that being said, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll talk to you next time.